Bookchube, it's Louise, the Big Head Bookworm. Lovely to see you. Hope you are well. If it sounds a bit different, it's because I'm in a different room and so it's slightly more echoey because I'm actually in the kitchen. So the books that you can see behind me are my kitchen books. Let's see if I can just move you slightly and then you can see all the kitchen books that I have behind me on my lovely wooden shelves. Um, Lots and lots of kitchen books. I like books in every way. So yes, it's just better for me to record today. So apologies for the change in sound. I have got a microphone, but I don't know where it is. So I need to find it and I need to clip it on so that you'll be able to hear me. So hopefully in another couple of videos, you'll see me with a microphone and we can hear a little bit better. So two parish notices for today. The first one is, yes, it is that time of year when it's all the summer fairs and summer fates. Um, each Saturday or Sunday, it's open gardens or open studios um, galore, quite frankly. And so the community fun bus has um, started again. Margaret's put quite an ambitious total of nine uh, for the itinerary for Saturday. So that's nine fairs and fates and open gardens that she's going to suggest that we do. The idea about behind the fun bus is you put your name down on the list and then you turn up at two o'clock get on the bus and we all set off and try to go to as many summer fairs and summer fates as possible in one afternoon. So when we arrive at a summer fair, it's hop off, grab your raffle ticket, your cup of summer punch, perhaps go to the cake store, perhaps go to the ice cream van, perhaps use the try the coconut shy. I always suggest after about the third or fourth that the toilets are a good place to visit as well. Um, don't want to have any accidents on the bus again. That was a bit awkward. Um, as I say, Margaret has suggested nine for Saturday. I don't think we've ever managed that many. I think our best was five um, in 2013, and that and that was that was quite quite messy. Hence the suggestion about the um, the toilets. Um, but we have more of a chance because hurrah! This year, uh, Cyril's not driving. Yay! So yes, yeah, so put your name down. The list is just in the community centre on the left-hand side on the notice board and I hope to see you on Saturday. The second parish notice is that I have managed to achieve something that I never thought I was going to achieve. Yes, I have managed to get to 2,000 subscribers. I know, I don't know. I don't know who's more shocked. You, me or the cats. I mean, it is quite something. I need to find some way to celebrate Um. And other than inviting you all out for a nice meal or to go to the local pub or to see you on Saturday in the fun bus, I, d I don't know. So my son suggested a question, a question and answer, but quite frankly, I'm not sure what you'd ask me other than, you know, how many cats have you got? Three. Um, so, yeah, so I'm, I have to think of something. I have to think of something to do to celebrate because it would be great. Maybe a question and answer is an idea. I don't know. I don't know. But thank you so much. Thank you so much to every single person that has a subscribed to anybody that has watched a video or liked or commented or has just um cast your eyes on one of my videos it's been absolutely amazing it's been an amazing couple of years on here um i haven't been as consistent as i would like to be because of life and i think probably that's always going to be my way um but i always will be coming back hopefully and gi giving you some bookish content at my little corner of the internet so what I'm, I'm going to do today is I'm going to do my am reading. So these are the books that I have read so far. I don't know what's happened to my July. I really don't. I have stunned myself because I have become a reading machine, quite frankly. I can read very, very quickly. Um, and I have been. <laughs> I have gone through mm, kind of nine books so far. I think it's going to be a bumper month. That's all I can say. So I shall whip through them. I'm not going to go into detail with any of the books. I'm just going to give you an, an, kind of an, a suggestion of what I found. So the first one I was actually an audio book, and that's Agatha Christie, A Caribbean Mystery. This is a Miss Marple set on a Caribbean island. It is a closed community, um, cosy mystery, gorgeously read by Joan Hickson on um, Audible. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I tend to have clean audio books because my nine-year-old son, Benedict, can hear them. Um, so we don't want to have any um, language issues or any content issues. So I tend to go for quite clean mysteries and this one was perfect. Look at that cover as well. Really enjoyed that one. Um, um, there are these. This is a kind of one of her few what books that you do need to read in um in a um, an order. So it's a Caribbean mystery, and then the one that comes after is, is Nemesis. So this is a great one to to read before you read Nemesis. You have to read them in that particular order. The most of them you don't have to read in a particular order, but that one I would suggest you do. 
I then, as I said in another book, uh, booktube, look at the ch change of colour. Dum, dum. It's all the white, isn't it? The white balance. Um, Nevernight by J. Christoph, which is a fantasy book about an assassin training at an assassin school. Our assassin is Mia. Her father and family are killed when she is 10. Um, and so she basically says that's it. Uh, revenge is, is her main um, reason for living and so she trains at an assassin school and it's about her getting into the assassin school and her first year there. It sounds like it's YA, it isn't YA, it is definitely adult. I seem to think I thought it was YA and I wonder whether that's why I wasn't reading it because I thought it was just going to be a, a YA book. It's way better than I thought, way better than I thought it was going to be and partly because it was adult. So there is a heavy amount of violence and there are some rude bits. Um, but I think that was good. I really enjoyed it. So I really recommend it. It's the first in a trilogy. I think God's Grave is coming out in the next month or two, which I will be picking up at some point. So that was a that was a hit for me, that one. Nevernight. This was a bit of a miss, unfortunately. Garden Spells by Sarah Addison Allen, which for some reason I am unable to say her name. Um, I had just picked up in a charity bookshop Sugar Queen, which is her second book. And this was her first book, which I already had. And I was so pleased that I managed to find it. I thought, oh, I shall read Garden Spells, which is a magical realism romance. Uh, set in North Carolina. I loved the setting. I liked the magical realism and the sense of kind of witches and, and that kind of stuff. The romance I found completely meh. Um, it is a clean romance. So even though it's an adult book, there isn't, there's very little, well, I don't, I'm not sure there's any rudeness in it. They do have um, sex outside of marriage. However, it is clean. So there's not kind of mass descriptions or anything nasty, but it is a romance book. I think I went in expecting it to be more and that was the problem. So it was my expectations. It was perfectly fine, is how I found it. But it just wasn't suiting me at that time. I wanted more. I wanted more. So I found it a bit meh. Um, so I picked up a book that I knew was going to give me a lot more more. Oh, yes. And that is Sarah McLean's No Good Duke Goes Unpunished. I have re uh, read this year A Rogue by Any Other Name and One Good Earl Deserves a Lover. So this is the third in the Rule of Scoundrels series. And, and it's great. It's Regency Romance. There are four owners of a gambling hell in London. They're all rogues. This is the third rogue, the Killer Duke. And... Um, Yes, it's great. It, it is quite saucy, which is what I wanted. So it did it exactly hit the spot. So well done you, Sarah McLean. I really, really like Sarah McLean's writing. So I am rapidly becoming a huge fan of her. So very, very pleased to read that. I wanted a bit of a crime. So I um, started to re I read Death in Disguise by Caroline Graham. This is the third in the Midsummer Murder series. This is the books that inspired the TV series. The books came first and then they were adapted. The first series, is they stick quite closely to the books and then they go off onto flights of fantasy. <laughs> um, but it is a modern day cosy crime, very much in the kind of Agatha Christie lineage. But we have police, um, it's Chief Inspector Barnaby is our detective. They're great. I mean, they they are well well more um, well more. That was nice, wasn't it? They are a lot more detailed, a lot more intricate than the TV programs that ever suggest because they're two hours. And I mean, it's a decent sized book. Uh, it's a, a decent sized mystery. But at the same time, I flew through them, and their lovely village settings. It's all that you would imagine a modern day Agatha Christie would write. So Caroline Graham, if you've not read any Caroline Graham and you like your cosy mysteries, you like your detective stories, um, oh, give them a go. They're just, I really recommend Caroline Graham. So that was enjoyable. I was um, so much enjoying the Rule of Scoundrel series that I ordered Never Judge a Lady by Her Cover, which is the, the fourth and final book in the Rule of Scoundrels um, series. So I was really chuffed to, to finish off the series. I think that this is perhaps the weaker out of the four. Um, I think the first three were all brilliant and I really enjoyed all of them. Um, I did find the th this one a little bit 
weaker but I still enjoyed it and I would recommend them if you like Regency romance or um, I mean I wanted something that was going to be rude and 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 saucy and um, yes <laughs> oh yes full of that full of that and I was in the mood for historical um, but I didn't want any more romance and so I picked up my second Maisie Dobbs or the second book in the Maisie Dobbs series which is actually my third Maisie Dobbs I've read um, do not read Maisie Dobbs out of order. That's that's my kind of my message to you. Start with Maisie Dobbs and then read Birds of a Feather. Look look at the cover. They just did them so wrong. Jacqueline Wentzberg writes Birds of a Feather, a Maisie Dobbs mystery. And I would say that the mystery is probably the less part of this book. It is so set in its its um, period of 1930. Maisie's a really strong character. She's bizarrely kind of withdrawn from you so you you know all about her and you know what she's doing but there is a distance from her um which I don't mind so although I was kind of emotionally connected to her I, I'm, I kind of like the fact there is a bit of a distance she is quite a self-contained character and she's self-contained even with you as as a reader I adore the amount of detail that are in these books. I like my books to have to be full of details. I like to know what they're wearing, what they're eating, what the weather's like. You know, if they're going to a door with a lock on it, I like to know where the lock is, what kind of lock it is. I mean, I like full detail, especially in my period piece novels. And so this really does capture that. And it really gives you a wonderful sensation um, of what the 1930s were, you know, you can feel the 1930s um, dripping in this book. So it's wonderful for that. The mystery, I think, is probably the secondary part of these books, but I don't mind that. I find them utterly enjoyable and so comforting to read and absorbing. I just, I can't praise them enough, really. So that was the second one, Birds of a Feather. Don't go into it looking for a massive mystery that's going to grip you. It's just a really phenomenally enjoyable book. So that's what I would say about that. So that's what I read. And then I read two books on my Kindle. And I'm going to try and do that thing where they put the cover here. No, 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 no. That side. There we go. There we go. So I saw on... Um, Prue's project, Reagan was reading Poison Study by um, Maria V. Schneider, and I hadn't, um, I've read those, I've read those a couple of years ago, I enjoyed all three study ones, I enjoyed the study series more than the glass series, because it goes three books in the study series and the three books in the glass series it's all connected and um, I really enjoyed the um study ones I loved poison study when it came out and I'm watching the video reminded me how much I enjoyed it and so I picked it up and I read it and it's one of those books that you can just fly through in a day so I really enjoyed it so poison study which is a fantasy book YA fantasy book um set in Ixia which is um a made-up place basically because it is all fantasy um they're just great. She's a food taster to the commander who is the equivalent of the it's the military king, equivalent to the king, but is the military leader in this area. There's a fly there, move that. Um and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I flew through it, it reminded me how much I enjoyed it. I haven't read it in its entirety for a while. I kind of picked out various chapters or picked it up as I was going along. So it was really good to read it from the start to the finish. So much so I read the second one, which is Magic Study by Maria V. Schneider and I read that from cover to cover because I was still in that mood and um, I then picked up Fire Study but I'm not counting this as a read because I very much skimmed this book I just wanted to get through it again so I have read the entire series again um, but the third book Fire Study I think it's the weakest out of the three of them um, not just because it's harder to wrap these things up but the first two you have tension about the, the romance, the relationship, and there is no tension in the third one, or I don't think there's any tension in the third one. Um, so, yeah, so I I enjoy the first two a lot, a lot more, but they're great YA fantasy books that um, I, I, I can fly through. And that's it. So that's what I've read so far. As you can see, I have read a phenomenal amount. I am now, at the moment, currently reading Jacqueline Winspear's Pardonable Lies, which is the third... Maisie Dobbs, which I think this is a slightly better jacket, not an awful lot, but a slightly better one. So this is our th my third Maisie, Maisie Dobbs, and I'm only 40 pages in, so 
but it was a nice addition though, it was nice and floppy. So yeah, so that's it, that's what I've, I've been reading. So as you can see, I have been, whew, a reading machine, as they say. I was hoping to come earlier, come back earlier, and, and so that I didn't have quite so many books to show you, but there we go. Fantastic amounts of books that I'm reading. And there we go, Bluetooth. Hope you're all having a good July. I know some people seem to be kind of a bit slumpy. I think my July, I think we can say that every month, can't we? That some people are slumpy and some people are reading hard. I've just been caught by some really good books, and I think I've just I've managed to get the right book at the right moment, and I think that's half of it is is getting the right book at the right moment. And I do read phenomenally quickly, so it's easy for me to get through stuff. And there we go. Well, it's been lovely book tube. It's been an absolute pleasure to see you, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.